What up nerds, I'm Hansi and today we're making... What's pretty cool about this build is that everything you need is some electronic components, a PVC pipe and a jar from IKEA. Not only is it cheap, but it's already frosted and it has a lid to easily access the inside. The blue Arduino Nano will control the LED lights based on input from this little guy. It works like a sound sensor and it's kinda cool as it outputs a value on both the analog and digital output pin based on the surrounding sounds. To power everything, we need a 5 volt power source. I didn't have that available, so I'm using this voltage step down module with a 12 volt power source instead. Now we're gonna solder a wire to the voltage in and ground pin on the Arduino. If you've been working with Arduinos before, you've probably seen this a thousand times already. But if you haven't, this is how we can power it with an external power source. We're using female to male header pins to connect the sound detector's ground and voltage input. To make it a little less messy, we can join the Arduino and the sound module wires together, and then add some shrinking tube before soldering it to the power source. Now we can shrink those tubes, and we can shift our attention back to the Arduino. To get the sound signals, we'll be using an analog pin which will read a value from 0 to 1023 from the analog output on the sound detector module. The last thing we need from the Arduino is a way to control our LED lights. We're gonna use some individually addressable LEDs, which can all be controlled from a single digital output pin. The LEDs also need to connect to the 5V power with their positive and negative wires. Before soldering on these final three wires on the LEDs, we add shrinking tubes for protection against shorting and for extra durability. Now we can solder them to the LED strip, making sure none of the wires touch each other and that all are in the right position. Move the shrinking tube into position and give it a good go with a heat gun. So put your head into code mode, because it's coding time. As we only get one sound input, it's easy to make a simple but rather boring version of this program. There are many ways to make it more interesting, by for instance detecting the intensity of a song. I won't be going through the code in this video, but I'll post a link to it down below. If many of you want a complete walkthrough, please tell me in the comments and I'll see what I can do. It's time to plug the power in, and we can upload the code to the Arduino using a USB cable. Let's put some music on and give it a test run. As you can see, it works pretty well already. When we're done, we can use the same code, but we can tweak the settings for the amount of LEDs to be used. To make everything fit inside our PVC pipe, we need to wrap it together and make sure that we can access the Arduino, the power, and that the sound detector has a free path to the surroundings. Using a hacksaw, we can cut the PVC pipe down to the length of our wonderful IKEA jar. Then, with some pincers, cut a little indent on the bottom, to make room for the LED strip. Take our little pack of electronics and stuff it into the PVC pipe. Keep the inputs flush with the bottom hole, so we can easily insert a power or USB cable. Now we can carefully wrap the LED strip around the pipe. If you have enough, you will get a stronger and more even light if you make sure that there is no space in between each round. We'll cut the strip at the top and glue it nicely in place. Now we have a cylinder of light. That's so cool! So guys, initially I thought the glass was made out of acrylic, but guys, look at this guys. It's not. It's made out of real glass, guys. So guess what happened? Look at this, guys. It's crazy! The glass cracked, what the f***? Guys, look at this. How cool is that? No, but seriously, the glass on the lid did break, so we need to make a new surface out of acrylic. We can use a regular hole saw the same size as the PVC tube to drill the hole. And then we can trace the outlines of the jar lid on the acrylic. To cut out the circle, I used a scroll saw. And quite a bit of patience to not make it too uneven. So once we have removed the protective film from the acrylic, we can glue it to the lid and the PVC pipe. And then we can add the jar to the lid. If I'm allowed to say that. To give the sound detector some space and give ourselves some room to put in the cables, we can take some knobs and use it as small legs for it to stand on. Anything can work as legs really, just make sure it looks okay. So guys, all that remains now is to plug in the power. Before we put on the music and take a look at it, I just want to say that this can be configured to act in a million different ways with a million different colors. It's all about the code really. So again, tell me if you want a little walkthrough on it. Thank you so much to all our subscribers and to our patrons for supporting our channel. You guys are awesome. Now, let's check this out.